all doing well and we're all ready to uh, get started to uh, uh, on this pretty important conversation with Mayor Hoydick uh, from the town of Stratford. Uh, we're happy to be here and with you joining us in your busy schedules this afternoon. So for those of you who may not know me, uh, my name is Dan Onofrio. Uh, I'm the president and CEO of the Stratford uh, Chamber of Commerce and the uh, Bridgeport Regional Business Council. And for those who are not familiar with the uh, Business Council and the Chamber's work, the, the council is really made up of, of three chambers. It's the Stratford Chamber of Commerce, the Bridgeport Chamber of Commerce, and the Trumbull Chamber of Commerce. And, um, and in aggregate, we make up the Business Council, which we do quite a bit of work uh, regionally through a regional lens, um, whereas the Chamber uh, focuses really on Main Street, Stratford, and, and, and the specific uh, business items within Stratford. So as we get started here, I just want to make sure that all of our participants can hear me. Um, so if you would, uh, just chat in the box down at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a little chat feature. Um, just select that and say, hey, Dan, how you doing? Um, let me know uh, where, you're, where you're listening in from. Um, let me know, more importantly, uh, during this restaurant week, where did you pick up lunch today for the session and hopefully from a Stratford restaurant. Um, so let us know how you're doing this afternoon. And um, I'm seeing some chats come through. Uh, Jerry Ann, thank you. Sterling House is here. Thank you, Mark. Uh, of course, the Stratford Economic Development uh, Com Commission uh, is, is in the house. I see uh, Joey C's uh, lunch is on the menu. Uh, uh, Gladys Soto from Sunset Shores is here uh, as, it, as you all are flying through here. So thanks so much to Sitting Duck. Uh, that's a great place as well. Sterling House representing uh, uh, and ordering in from uh, uh, the Sitting Duck, the Whiskey Barrel, all these great restaurants. So, so thank you so much for su supporting uh, Stratford Restaurant. It's been a um, uh, you know a tough year for all of us, especially the restaurants. Uh, hi, Karen Delvecchio. I know a lot of folks would like to, to hear your name uh, from our organization and, and around Biagio's, the Windmill, Paradise Pizza. So fantastic. So as we get going here, um, uh, I like to also acknowledge our sponsors. Uh, you know, with, without them, you know, these events are just hard to do, um, you, know, you know, as we uh, try to do our part in representing businesses, uh, not just in Stratford, but in the greater Bridgeport region. So uh, our presenting sponsor today is Bridgeport Fittings, who's been a, a, a wonderful supporter of our organization over the years. Uh, Ash Creek Enterprises, uh, Mitchell and Sheehan, um, attorneys uh, for Mitchell and Sheehan uh, are sponsoring today, as well as an aquarium water company. And finally, the Milford Bank. And for those of you who uh, are, are familiar with the Milford Bank, they are wonderful, wonderful uh, supporters of uh, both Milford and Stratford communities. Um, we're grateful for uh, their participation uh, in supporting this event and all they do for the community um, within Stratford and the region. Uh, and in a moment, I'll introduce our chair, Patty Gallagher, who, uh, who is the manager of Milford Bank uh, Stratford's office, uh, as she will introduce um, uh, Mayor Hoydick. Um, so with that, um, I would like to start off this wonderful session with um, a short video from Mayor Hoydick and why you want to do business and come to Stratford. Um, but before I do that, just one note of housekeeping. Um, we will have a, sh a short Q&A at the end of this session. Um, so if you do have a question for Mayor Hoydick, I'll do my best. I know the chat, I'll try to manage the chat and the Q&A section down at the bottom of the screen. But if you have a question and you'd like to ask it, you can either enter it in the Q&A section um, or just let us know through the chat um, what your question might be. And as you're doing that, um, make sure you also select, um, if you're using the chat, the function or the button that says, my chat is going to all the panelists and attendees. Um, this way everyone sees uh, your question, everyone sees your comments. Um, I know it defaults to all the panelists, but uh, we'd like to have everyone be in, included uh, in this conversation since we can't be physically in person. I know we missed last year's session with Mayor Hoydick due to the pandemic, and uh, we made a commitment as an organization to, to stay remote through, um, through June. And, um, and hopefully we'll, we'll be back to business as normal and being able to hug and shake hands and and be back together very soon in the near future. So we look forward to all that. So with that, um, let's watch this very short video on, uh, on Stratford businesses and, and why you wanna be, be in Stratford.
Starting a business is not easy. Um, and for us, we were looking for a nice location, but we also knew that because it's a brewery, you have to work closely with the town. And we talked to a lot of different towns. And the thing that struck us about Stratford was that they desired to work with us rather than just give us the Heisman and say, no, go talk to somebody else. We don't have an answer. And it was very refreshing. One of the things I liked best was working with the town of Stratford. First, I met a lot of the people here, the economic development, real estate agents in town. And I did find that it was very easy to open up the business simply because they wanted my business. The thing I like about Stratford the most is the growing positive vibe that's happening in town. There's a lot of positive things happening, a lot of new businesses opening, um, and also the general feeling about Stratford, too. It's a town that you want to live in, a town that you want to do business in. Everyone is super friendly and uh, definitely willing to help each other out. One of my favorite Stratford stories is we were at your restaurant. I was having uh, lunch with the mayor, and she asked you, how's the, the new restaurant coming? So she knew what was happening in town, and she was asking, how can I help support yeah. it? You know, what, who can I call? How can I make this easier for you? And I think that's one of the things that's unique about Stratford is that everyone is really wants to see everyone else succeed. Um, when it comes to small businesses. We were very nervous when we opened the uh, beginning. When we opened, I feel very comfortable and the people, the town, and they support me. I don't want to leave them because I love them so much. <laughs> I love Stratford, man. I think we're a very rare breed. This is our 24-foot uh, tiny house on wheels. It's a very, a really good feeling of community spirit here in town. We, we really kind of fit into another piece in the puzzle as far as a small business in the town. It's fantastic. Stratford is really accommodating to manufacturers like us, both from the economic development folks, but also it's a fantastic location. Really collaborative. Everybody's super helpful, positive, innovative. If ever you have an issue, everybody works together to help solve it. If I had to use one word to describe being here in Stratford, it's playful. Welcoming. People. Renaissance. Very supportive. Calidad de vida. Opportunity. Excellent video there from, uh, from the Stratford Economic Development Commission uh, in the town of Stratford. Uh, well done. If that doesn't get you motivated and excited to just uh, have them part of our network and and a place to go and visit and uh, and support businesses there, I don't know what what what, what will. Um, so with that, uh, I love to introduce our chair of the Stratford Chamber of Commerce, uh, Patty Gallagher, who, as I mentioned, um, is the uh, manager over at the Stratford uh, office for Milford Bank. Uh, and again, Milford Bank's been a wonderful supporter. She's been uh, a great leader of the Stratford Chamber of Commerce. And uh, just a quick nod to all of our Chamber of Commerce board members who are on this video or on this uh, session this afternoon. Uh, you know, a lot of work goes into uh, just doing what we can to support businesses. Uh, and with Patty's leadership and Milford Bank's commitment to the business community uh, makes it a little bit easier for all of us. Uh, you know, there's that saying of many hands make light work. And our board members all should be uh, commended for uh, their efforts and in, in, in really keeping Stratford businesses in tune with what's going on in partnership with the town of Stratford and the Economic Development Office and, and other uh, uh, groups, especially the, you know, the, the Department of Health over this last year as well. So with that, uh, Patty Gallagher, the floor is yours. Uh, and, and thank you so much again for your support and leadership. Hi, uh, thank you, Dan. Um, as Dan mentioned, I am the branch manager of Milford Bank's Stratford office. Uh, Milford Bank is proud of our commitment to the Stratford community. We are encouraged to serve and support groups such as Sterling House, Stratford's Best Committee, the Mayor's Charity Golf Tournament, and by sponsoring events such as Stratford's Main Street Festival. We have supported many businesses during the pandemic with our efforts in PPP lending, and we are excited to launch a micro commercial lending service in the fall to meet the needs of our smallest business of the smallest businesses in the communities we serve, who sometimes struggle with reasonably priced access to capital. Thank you again for joining us today. Um, I'm a few words about Mayor Hoydick. 
Uh, Mayor Ho Laura Hoydick has spent most of her life living, working, and volunteering in the town of Stratford. Laura is married to Paul Hoydick and a mother of three daughters, Brooke, Jillian, and Paige, all of whom are graduates of the Stratford Public School System. She is proud to recently have welcomed her new grandson, Jonathan Paul, who is a son of Brooke and son-in-law Stephen. Uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic, daughter Jillian was able to marry Asa Rutledge in August of last year. Laura has over 20 years of experience as a commercial property manager, formerly with both Station House Square of Stratford and Wynn Stanley Property Management of New Haven. Laura served as the executive director of the Stratford Chamber of Commerce from 2003 to 2007. She returned to the role of executive director from January to December in 2017. In this role, Laura has acted as a liaison to local and state government on behalf of the Stratford business community. In 2010, Laura was elected to the State House of Representatives to represent the 120th district, which is located entirely within Stratford. In the Connecticut General Assembly, Laura was an outspoken advocate for the interests of Stratford, rising to the critical roles on the banks, finance, revenue, and bonding committees. She was the ranking member of the Energy and Technology Committee, which, where she distinguished herself by leading the fight for lower statewide utility rates and improved infrastructure. Earning a reputation for diligence and working across the political aisle to build consensus, she promoted to serve as Deputy Republican Leader in 2015. She served in the House until she was elected the third mayor of Stratford in 2017, the first woman to hold that office. As mayor, Laura, Laura has brought her past experience in property management and leadership in the chamber to bear as she focuses on economic development and redevelopment in Stratford and ending the previous cycle of low local tax increases by putting forward four budgets in a row that do not raise taxes. Laura is well known in Stratford for her dedication to Stratford schools. Prior to her election to the state legislature, she served as an elected, elected member of the Board of Education for seven years, four of them as chairwoman. She has also held prominent roles in the Second Helene and Flood Middle School PTAs. Laura's volunteer contributions to the town are numerous. She has been especially dedicated to Sterling House Community Center, the Greater um, Greater Bridgeport AmeriCorps National Service Program, the Stratford Partnership for Youth and Families, the Perry House Foundation, and Our Lady of Grace Church. She also served two years as an elected member of the Stratford Planning Commission. In November 2015, she was appointed to the Board of Directors to the Stratford Visiting Nurse Association. Laura's dedication to our community has been recognized with several awards including the Youth as Resources Adult Volunteer Award, the Woman of Distinction Award from the Housatonic Girl Scout Council and the Friend of Education Award from the Stratford Board of Education. She was awarded the AARP Legisl Legislative Leadership Award in 2011 and 2012, Bridgeport Regional Business Council Legislator of the Year Award in 2011, New England Clean Energy Council Champion Award in 2015, and the Susan L. Davis Leadership Award in 2015. She holds a business administration degree from Sacred Heart University, where she is a member of the National Honor Society Alpha Sigma Lambda. Um, on a personal note, I have known Mayor Hoydick for many years. Our families attended Garden School together all the way through Stratford High School. We played with and against each other on the playgrounds and on the softball field. Her team, the windmill, could not be beat. Um, and we currently serve on the board of the Perry House together. Uh, it is my great pleasure and honor to introduce Mayor Laura Hoydick. Thank you for your interest in Stratford and in the state of the town address. This address is coming to you via video in consideration of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic that continues to grip our community, our state, our nation, and the globe. During this past year, our community has been tested in ways we couldn't have imagined a mere 13 months ago. 
But as with other major crises throughout our history, Stratford has been an example of resilience and strength. I credit the unique makeup of this great town, its residents, employees, businesses, community service organizations, and volunteers who have fought and continue to fight in the front lines as we find ourselves on the verge of emerging from this pandemic. Virtually all Stratford departments have been engaged in some meaningful way in combating the spread of COVID-19, and that is where I'd like to begin this report. Since March of 2020, when the first confirmed case of COVID-19 was announced here in Stratford, our Department of Public Health, led by Director Andrew Bosevin, and our Public Safety Departments, led by Larry Ciccarelli, have been at the center of our community response, facilitating numerous community testing opportunities, responding to those in need, and taking a proactive role in limiting the spread of the virus through the community outreach and awareness. As school closed on the onset of COVID-19, Superintendent Janet Robinson ensured through a partnership with Sodexo, Stratford Public Schools and our own community services that meals would remain available for children who were suddenly no longer attending schools in person. That program has grown and through association with our various community pantries, such as Sterling House, Stratford YMCA and the South End Community Center, we continue to work to ensure that those in need during these crises receive meals. We launched a groundbreaking program called Operation Homeward Bound, a partnership between the Stratford Health Department and Emergency Medical Services that ensures seniors and those in need who are homebound, they are still able to get and receive the COVID-19 vaccination at their home. While individuals in our town have been impacted by COVID-19, so have our area's businesses. That is why our Economic and Community Development Department, under the leadership of Mary Dean, engaged in a number of outreach programs to promote our great local restaurants for takeout during the early closures. They have helped facilitate local and state grants and relief opportunities for our qualifying local businesses, began a job bank that connects Stratford residents with job openings and Stratford businesses, and are serving as a clearinghouse of information and resources that are available to help all Stratford businesses who need it. We have also created Stratford Strong, a long-term recovery task force through our economic development and community and senior services departments with a focus on identifying community needs and leveraging financial and volunteer resources to address those needs. The task force has two groups, basic needs with members including Sterling House, the South End Community Center, the Stratford YMCA, Stratford Hispanic Heritage, Police Activities League, the Stratford Interfaith Clergy Association, and other organizations. The Small Business Resource Group includes partners from the Stratford Chamber of Commerce, United Illuminating, Stratford Businesses, and the Metropolitan Councils of Government. As we continue to deal with the challenges of the pandemic, the regular operation of the town has needed to continue. I am proud of the directors, chiefs, supervisors, and employees who have kept the business of our town running as smoothly as possible under these extraordinary circumstances. I would like to thank the members of the Town Council who have supported our budgets and policies and who have been critical partners in approving three successive town budgets that have provided a reduction in the mill rate, ending the cycle of tax increases that gripped Stratford in previous years. I have done that again in the proposed budget, which was released to the Council on March 12th. In contrast to the preceding Council of 2015-17, this Council has achieved their fiduciary responsibility in a timely manner by approving budgets and setting corresponding mill rates that have lowered taxes. I look forward to working collaboratively with all members of the Council this year to improve on the work we have done, which includes improving town policies that promote environmental sustainability and reducing littering, taking advantage of low interest borrowing to improve infrastructure and embracing economic development opportunities. In addition to an effective, relevant council, I am blessed to work with professional, experienced, and proactive staff whose expertise is greatly valued by me and is critical to the functionality of town operations. My Chief Administrative Officer, Chris Timniak, Chief of Staff, Michael Downs, Economic and Community Development Director, Mary Dean, and Public Safety Director, Larry Ciccarelli, are key to how we function and how we represent ourselves to the taxpayers and to our neighbors. Let me start with some of the highlights in the areas of economic and community development. In response to the coronavirus pandemic, the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, also known as HUD, notified the town that Stratford would receive an additional $308,500 in CDBG-CV funding, which is to be used to prevent, prepare for, and respond to the coronavirus pandemic. This is the third and final allocation authorized by the Coronavirus Aid Relief and Economic Securities Act, also known as CARES, which was signed on March 27, 2020, to respond to the growing effects of this history of public health crisis. 
In an effort to assist many struggling small businesses within our community, the town has established the Micro Enterprise Assistant Program, which will provide much needed support to help our business community prevent, prepare for, and respond to the coronavirus. 40 small businesses have applied so far, and 24 have been accepted by the Economic Development Office. For the Exit 33 interchange on Interstate 95, the construction of this full interchange is expected to be complete about six to seven months ahead of schedule. The northbound entrance is expected to open this June, and the southbound exit will open at the close of 2021. This interchange will be a significant benefit to the town by creating an improved traffic pattern on Route 1, aiding in the commercial redevelopment around Stratford's transit-oriented district and the Route 1 corridor. Two newly completed projects in that area include 608 Ferry Boulevard, a building that was vacant for several years and is now a mixed-use retail on the first level and residential on the second, and Knott's Landing, Sydney Street, where Erdstadt Biddle transformed several vacant homes into a tax revenue-producing commercial property with a Chipotle restaurant, a self-storage facility, and soon-to-be Starbucks. At exit 32, the intersection and surrounding area have been redesigned, improving the off-ramp from I-95 South and the means of access and traffic from West Broad and Linden Street, along with safer pedestrian travel. Completion of this project is expected in early summer. The Scudder School property has received two informal proposals that have presented for our housing developments in the transit-oriented district. There is renewed interest in this location due the, to the proximity of the train station and Stratford Center. After a great deal of time, effort, and money being expended to redevelop the Stratford Army engine plant, the Army provided the final decision document in February to Connecticut Deep, which has been signed by Commissioner Dykes. The record of decision will enable the Army Corps of Engineers to begin remediating the mudflats along the property and cleanup and development of the upland 77 plus acres. This is the first critical step in the meaningful progress of the redevelopment of this site. Work is expected to commence this fall and we are very, very excited for this day. In 2020, I put together a subcommittee that looked at the possible redevelopment options for Shakespeare property based on the community's feedback following the fire. The subcommittee did a wonderful job of presenting different size and types of venues along with the multiple business plans. Any development on this site will require some capital investment as part of the town. Looking forward, the council is interested in proposals for the property. However, they are very conscious not to overextend the town at this point. In the meantime, we are grateful that the property is being enjoyed by literally thousands of residents and neighboring towns with the Shakespeare Winter Market. Kudos to Tom Dillon, who along with himself has volunteered his family's time to organize and run the market. Significant funding has been awarded to the Complete Streets Project, which encompasses a portion of Main Street from Barnum Avenue through the center of town and south to Harvey Place. The town has submitted a 60% design to DOT, who have already committed to funding over $2 million for the implementation. Demolition and remediation at 495 Lordship Boulevard are complete. The GFI, who is the owner, will be submitting building permits and plans to deep before the end of the year. The 360,000 square foot building is currently being marketed and may likely be a warehouse or distribution center. Riders Landing, also known as Parkway Plaza Highlights, have submitted for development, signature waterfront gateway development, upscale restaurant retail hospitality destination, design that promotes tourism, education, and community, and encourages pedestrian and recreational use, connecting to the Sikorsky Bridge bikeway and walkway, it incorporates Merritt Parkway architectural designs and integrates with the adjacent Merritt Parkway Museum. Stratford Avenue Rotary Design has been sent to DOT and in the next few months with the project expected to be completed sometime in the fall. The town's new online permitting through Viewpoint was in place prior to 2020, which enabled permitting to move seamlessly at the start of the pandemic. The town was able to continuously enhance the process so that the business could benefit by increasing their footprints over the past year to address COVID restrictions. Despite the economic challenges of COVID-19 and the general condition of the overall state economy, we are pleased to have welcomed over 145 new businesses to Stratford over the past year, including Amazon Services, Fairfield County Healthcare Associates, and Nutmeg State Financial Credit Union. Stratford managed significant business and personal property growth, which are credit to our community, our welcoming and supportive business climate, and the increased desirability of living here in Stratford. The town clerk's office, under the direction of Susan Pollock, faced many challenges during the 2020 pandemic year. More importantly, they have learned lessons on how to work smarter and become more efficient along the way. They continue to secure grant funding to have older land records re-indexed, scanned, and merged into our online database. 
Title searchers and the public can find these land recordings online going back to 1980. This has been extremely helpful during the pandemic where land records and maps can be easily accessed online and printed. This has greatly reduced the in-person traffic within the office. With lower interest rates, there's been an uptick in real estate sales. The town clerk's office recorded 9,400 land record documents in 2020, which was an increase of 649 from 2019. The town's real estate conveyance tax collected in 2020 was a little less than 900,000, and it, overall it increased by 125,000 over 2019. The most daunting challenge in 2020 was the issuing of absentee ballots for the presidential primaries and the November election. Voters were able to use COVID-19 as a reason to vote by absentee ballot. The most absentee ballots ever issued in a presidential election were 2014. But in 2020, in the presidential election, the town clerk's office issued over 10,000 absentee ballots. In the planning and zoning office, Jay Habansky, zoning administrator, has worked diligently to achieve Stratford's acceptance into FEMA's National Flood Insurance Program community rating system, and that's based on its efforts in protecting the town's residents from storm flood-related events. Coastal and riverine flooding causes hundreds of millions of dollars worth of damage to homes and businesses around the country on an annual basis. Typical homeowners and commercial property insurance policies do not cover these flood losses. Ms. Smitha Atata, our town planner, has worked alongside Jay and alongside the new Architectural Review Board. Currently, Ms. Smitha is working with the Stratford Housing Partnership to draft and present Stratford's first housing plan. Much planning is underway to make the town more resilient to coastal impacts. Building on the Coastal Resiliency Plan of 2016, the town has applied for multiple grants to further its mitigation efforts. One such grant that was recently awarded will provide partial funding for a flood wall to provide perimeter protection to the water pollution control facility. This project will be designed to a level in excess of the currently predicted 500 year storm, allowing the plant to continue to operate during and immediately after coastal events. The town is in the middle of a project to renovate five of its sanitary sewer pump stations that are at the end of their design life. These improvements will renovate the buildings at Oak Bluff, Short Beach, Benton Street, Pex Mill Pond, and Riders Lane. The work will include coastal resiliency upgrades to improve the structure and equipment from the storm in excess of the 500-year predicted storm. State-of-the-art pumps, controls, and communication will provide an efficient pumping facility at each location. This project is scheduled for completion in the spring of 2022. The permitting effort for the replacement of the Surf Avenue culvert and the flood wall continues, working with Connecticut DOP and Connecticut DEEP to secure approvals for this project. Under the direction of Andrea Bosove in the Stratford Health Department, one of three accredited health departments in the state of Connecticut continues to apply high standards of performance for the benefit of Stratford residents and businesses. Apart from the aforementioned central role they play in responses to the global pandemic, they are working with regional and state partners in implementing the newly adopted federal FDA food code. The health department has assisted in the launch of Viewpoint and is partnering with local health departments to design and share the cost of food inspection software. The town council has reviewed and approved updating ordinance for barbershops, hairdressing, and cosmetology. Community health is a priority for us, as well as the six collaborating area health departments, two acute care hospitals, three community health centers, and other organizations who are addressing chronic diseases such as obesity, diabetes, heart disease, mental health, and substance abuse in our communities. Earlier this year, Tammy Trojanowski took over a new department that consolidated both community services and senior services. Senior and community services emerged to strengthen our capacity to support Stratford residents across the lifespan. Specifically, this realignment makes our services more accessible and easier to navigate for residents so that there is no wrong door. This also improves collaboration amongst the town's human services professionals that will benefit residents. Community services transitioned individual youth counseling, family therapy, and court diversion through the Juvenile Review Board from in-person to telehealth for continuous uninterrupted services during the pandemic. They have started accepting insurance for counseling services. Child Health Development Institute of Connecticut, CHDI, also credentialed community services as a trauma-focused cognitive behavioral therapy certified treatment site. Counselors complete in-depth training in trauma utilizing the evidence-based treatment model. This allows us to handle trauma cases without needing to refer out to other providers due to lack of trauma experience. We are better equipped to help Stratford residents during intense times of need. Community Services is a key partner with economic development spearheading Stratford Strong, our long-term recovery task force. 
Through this collaboration, we have leveraged CDBG funds to meet unmet needs of residents and small businesses. Social services provided by community services, senior services in the South End Community Center, including accepting CT energy assistance programs and applications, renter's rebate applications, and IRS VITA tax prep assistance were completed over the telephone to provide safe, contactless service for residents. The South End Community Center Food Pantry, operating in cooperation with the South End Community Center Council, scaled up to meet increased demand. They also expanded services to include delivery to older patrons. Prior to the start of COVID-19 pandemic, three to 400 seniors visited the Baldwin Center daily. They participated in any number of activities, recreational, exercise, painting, lectures. They socialized over coffee. They played card games and pool. Transportation services provided curb-to-curb -curb service from home to medical appointments, grocery stores, and to the Baldwin Center. During the pandemic, we provided vital transportation, food delivery, well check calls, and assistance in making COVID-19 vaccinations appointments and made countless referrals to a variety of local, regional, and state organizations. The Baldwin Center also served as a COVID-19 test site for Yale New Haven Health. The much-anticipated makeover of the Baldwin Center is officially now underway. From top to bottom, the floors will be replaced, new light fixtures installed, and it will receive a fresh coat of paint. The center has also been outfitted with new furniture so that when seniors return, they have a great new renovated facility to enjoy. This year, we also completed the improvements and realignment of Route 110 and relocation of the entrance at Sikorsky, which includes pedestrian improvements and a new bus shelter, dedicated turn lane to Oranoke Lane, and video-controlled lights at the Route 15 off-ramp. This improvement has been a tremendous benefit to improving traffic flow in the area, particularly during rush hour. We have come a long way since the spring of 2018 when we hosted EPA Assistant Administrator Alexandra Dunn on a visit to the Robustus Ball Field site and announced the plan to successfully remediate the contamination there. The cleanup of the federal Raymark Superfund site and the adjacent contract plating site has progressed on target during 2020. Barrier walls are in place along the tree plantings to buffer residential properties on Cottage Place, Clinton Avenue, Patterson Avenue, and from future construction will continue through the remediation activities. The Hall Road through the former contract plating site at 540 Longbrook Avenue is in use hauling Raymark material to the ball field. The contract plating site partnering with the ball field will soon be marketed for light industrial use, putting over 17 acres in the TOD on the tax rolls. We have made other significant strides in conservation environmental fronts, and the town was recently recognized with a silver certification by Sustainable City. Stratford is one of the very few communities that reached the silver certification, currently the highest level, without a prior bronze certification. The town continued management of the $2.8 million grant from DECD, for the assessment and cleanup of the former contract plating at 540 Longbrook Avenue, and also continued managing of the $1.2 million DECD grant for the cleanup of the former center school property located on 1000 East Broadway. Our community outreach programs through our Police Activities League, PAL, and other avenues continue to grow. The primary mission is to expand programs and to connect with at-risk youth. The PAL design will be to maintain contact through all levels of school. We continue to work with the Board of Education to tailor PAL programs to students who will benefit the most from the mentoring. PAL has impacted in excess of 1,000 students in the previous year and is still growing. The Stratford Police Department has developed a police engagement program to educate citizens on how to react to police contact. This program began in 2016 under the direction of Curtis Eller, James Lofton, and Aaron McLaughlin. It is our belief that this information shows a perspective from citizen to officer. The program places residents in a position of an officer and runs the scenarios in which they must choose a course of action. Real-world incidents are then reviewed and then discussed. This allows unfiltered dialogue and openness, and we have run this program in both high schools and several area churches and four community groups. Technology has become an important crime-fighting tool. Our computer forensics division has become a recognized leader in this area. We will continue to invest in upgrading computers and video surveillance. We will coordinate with other local businesses for access to camera surveillance and to assist in investigations. Dispatch, under the direction of J.P. Straczynski, has successfully deployed new technologies such as Text to 911, AEAD Link, and the new recording device in Varen. Increased training opportunity for staff include ride-alongs, customer service training, active shooter events, 
Web EOC and created new revenue opportunities for training and testing other department's dispatchers. Our emergency medical service, reporting to Mike Louise, the executive director, is an accredited National Association of EMTs training center, an approved American Heart Associated training center, and an approved safe sitter training site. Stratford EMS is a heart safe workplace and has maintained enhanced heart safe community EMS Association Lighthouse Awards. EMS was able to achieve Mission Lifeline Gold Plus recognition status through the American Heart Association for their response times and work with heart attacks. EMS is also working very closely with the health department to deliver the COVID-19 vaccine to as many residents as possible. Early last year, I was pleased to appoint Brian Lampart as the chief of the Stratford Fire Department. Under his capable leadership, the fire department faced numerous challenges under COVID-19. They were successful with formulating directives for protecting our own, as well as citizens that we serve to limit the spread of the virus. The fire department is pursuing grant monies to help improve our fire ground communication, specialty rescue training, and smoke alarms to be installed at residential locations that are deficient of fire protection. In May of 2020, the town was awarded an ISO classification two that ultimately can save the taxpayers a significant amount of money through property insurance. Renovations have been made to both the Huntington Road Station two and Lordship Firehouse Station three, that including many overdue upgrades, flooring, kitchen upgrades, bathroom facility upgrades, heating and air conditioning, painting and lighting. The fire department continues to provide professional service 24 hours a day, seven days a week to anyone who needs help. I was happy to promote Robert Daniel to assistant fire chief and fire marshal. The office under his leadership has issued an increased number of building permits with several large scale projects completed. The Stratford High School project, three self storage facilities, the demolition of the mobile chemical plant, which will be replaced by a new 360,000 square foot building, and the Parkway Plaza project and several Sikorsky projects. The fire marshal's office remains open 24 seven and will continue to work throughout the COVID pandemic, conducting fire code inspections and fire investigations with no shutdown. The office has been available to residents and businesses of Stratford during these trying times. Under the management of Chris Timniak, CAO, and Don Sabo, our new finance director, the finance department incorporated efficiencies that make Stratford run leaner than prior years. Through their efforts, we have consolidated efforts between the town and the Board of Education, which affords us increased buying power and lower costs. We have closed out old bonds, returning millions of dollars to the town, and we have started taking advantage of short-term debt options, lowering our long-term debt. During the past year, we have made critical long-term adjustments to funding our pension and bonded debt that have resulted in savings of $9.1 million over the bond terms. Refinancing has created a $3 million in budgetary relief in 2022 and $2.7 million in each 2023 and 2024 and 560000 in fiscal year 2025. We are realizing significant savings through expanding combined services with the Board of Education and we continue to make further strides utilizing technology aimed at a more efficient process with our recent MUNIS upgrade for all departments. Our Public Works Department is now under the capable direction of Renee Sarah, the first woman to hold the position of Public Works Director, assisted by Tom Albert, who is the interim Deputy Public Works Director. Together, they continue to manage and maintain more than 1.8 million square feet of building and 200 miles of roads and sidewalks. Public Works has maintained a second shift parks crew that has afforded the town additional field maintenance coverage while reducing costs and added a second shift building crew to repair town and Board of Education buildings while they are unoccupied by students and staff. During the pandemic, we have been especially mindful of the upkeep and outdoor amenities we offer for residents to enjoy. Specifically, the completion of the new pavilion, sidewalks, and concrete pad at Juliet Low Park a new irrigation system at Short Beach Golf Course and Short Beach Wall Fields, and the renovation of Stony Brook Baseball Field, the returfing of Bunnell High School Football Field, the renovation of the school's running track and the hardball field, the completion of the South End Community Center Playscape with state funding, and a complete infield overhaul at DeLuca Field and the upcoming design and installation of four new post-tension tennis courts at Long River Park are a few of the highlights. Public Works is also focused on improving the aesthetics of the town with the addition of the flowering pots on the lamppost at Main Street and the increased holiday lights and snowflakes on every lamppost on Main Street and Barnum Avenue. Public Works took advantage of the unobscured access to town and Board of Education facilities to complete efficiency upgrades and projects such as boiler replacements, oil and gas conversions, 
installation of LED lights, and initiating a major facelift and asbestos abatement at the Baldwin Center. Our recreation department successfully created a safe COVID-compliant way to offer summer camps, athletic programs, virtual theater activities, and swim lessons for children and adults to enjoy during this challenging time. This spring, we can begin our bulk item collection, which was extended last year during COVID, so that many residents could take advantage of their time at home to clean out large items. This spring, we are beginning our paving and sidewalk repair program throughout town. The final phases of the new Stratford High School are near completion, with full occupancy of the new gymnasium, auxiliary gym, auditorium lecture hall, music rooms, and the culinary classrooms. The final phase of this summer will be the installation of solar panels on the roof, which, which will reduce the cost of electricity empowering the building. Despite the unforeseen challenges associated with the pandemic, the project is being delivered under the approved budget. I'm honored and proud to represent Stratford as your mayor. Our community builds team, accentuates partnership, and achieves great results from those collaborations. When I think of Stratford, I think of unbelievable environmental assets in our river, our shore, and our forest. I see transportation infrastructure of adjacent highways, rail and air. I see nonprofit partners second to none in our library, YMCA, Sterling House, South End Community Center, Stratford Visiting Nurses, and the Stratford Chamber of Commerce. And most importantly, I see the resiliency of a community that knows itself, works together, and can achieve greatness, particularly in these trying times. I'm looking forward to what the future holds for our special community of Stratford. Thank you for taking the time to watch today. That was fantastic, Mayor Hoytick. Thanks so much for uh, recording that video. Um, it was uh, so much information. And, and first of all, just thank you for your leadership over this last year. I mean, gosh, it's been such a challenging year for all of us, but this year, all of those projects, uh, all of the things that the progress that you've made um, with you know your team and, and you acknowledge quite a few people that I personally have had an opportunity to work with as well with the Stratford Strong team, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment, and, and uh, the Stratford Economic uh, Development Commission, which I've been fortunate enough to, to, to participate in their meetings and hearing all the great projects that you still have lined up and, and looking forward to uh, in the future. So thanks so much um, for that wonderful update. Did you want to say a couple of comments before uh, I've got some questions here for you? And then just to remind our audience, that's participating. If you want to ask some questions, feel free to uh, to raise your hand or, or enter something in the uh, Q and A, um, and I'll do my best to uh, to try to manage and uh, and moderate this thing um, for the next uh, 10, 15 minutes or so. So, Mayor Hoytick, did you, you want to add anything else there? Well, I'd like to thank you, Dan and Patty, um, for allowing me to to address the business community. Um, as Patty said, she and I have been friends for a long time. Back back at our garden school days. And the greatest thing about our community and how we've all worked together is that we have worked together as a team. And you've experienced that, you've been an integral part of this, along with our business communities, all of our partners, and we couldn't have done it without any of you. Um, and I think as we come out the other end of this, we really are putting a good face on, face, face on what we've accomplished. I'd like to thank the sponsors, Bridgeport Fitting, Aquarion, Ash Creek, and the Milford Bank um, for their continued support and involvement with the town of Stratford. Excellent. Yeah, I heard uh, Patty's comments about softball. I wish I had an opportunity to watch <laughs> you two play. Uh, you both fierce competitors. I can see that just by working with you over the last year. <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> those, those must have been something to say. Um, great. So, so with that, we, you know, obviously, you know, COVID-19, the pandemic is, you know, fresh on everyone's mind. You know, it seems like there's quite a bit of, uh, of light at the end of this tunnel, uh, you know, with the, the rate of vaccinations and all that. So I just have a, a couple of questions I'd like to just start off with, uh, just because I've had a personal experience um, working with the Stratford Strong team, and you alluded to Stratford Strong. So I am curious, uh, you know, from your perspective, you know, can you discuss, you know, what Stratford has done differently to support the business community in town uh, during the pandemic, you know, and just elaborate a little bit more on, on those kind of efforts? Sure. Thank, thank you for that, um, that question. So we knew that outside of the manufacturers and the food businesses, we were really going to have um, significant issues with our small businesses specifically about um, being able to stay open, being able to employ their current staff, and how they were going to be able to keep their economics um, in, a, in a positive cash flow state. So 
as a town, we decided we were not going to furlough or lay, lay off any of our employees to keep again that economics and that cash flow going and people could uh, could participate in the community. And so the, we realized we needed to identify and remind all, the, all of our residents who was still here, who was struggling and who needed a little bit of help. And through the Economic Development Commission and Mary Dean and, um, and her, her team, we were able to do those market segments of who was doing what about cutting hair, about fixing cars, about restaurants and all the businesses that needed to be in the forefront so we could re remind ourselves if you had a little extra that you could give to somebody, you needed to share the wealth and uh, help these folks along. Yeah, excellent. And you know, the other thing that I found astonishing is watching you know, things unfold in the region and, and how Stratford responded. And you, know, you mentioned it by naming quite a few people during your address um, that really have come together. Um, can you expand on that? You know, obviously, uh, you know, it's been an unusual, challenging time for, for communities across the globe, um, but specifically in, in Stratford, um, can you speak a little bit more to how the town kind of came together with all the others to address these, these issues? Sure, sure. I, you know, in August of 2018, we had a, um, a, a very devastating fire in a housing development and 30 units of condos were, um, were damaged and people didn't have a place to live just like that. And this community in 2018 came together, our nonprofits, the town and pulled together. It was Sterling House, it was community service, it was senior services. It was uh, the Stratford Y and we all pulled together um, and, and to help these 30 families. And that started um, the segue into what we would experience during the pandemic. You know, it was led by our health department and our health director, Andrew Bosvain, but she felt this strength and this collaboration from all of these groups, um, the, the school district, the public safety team about how we could work together to best fortify Stratford and move us along, sharing information. <clears throat> I have to thank Mike Downs because every day for a while we were sending out emails to anybody who wanted them saying where, where they could get tested, what the next step was, what Governor Lamont was doing. And that kind of constant communication and teamwork really brought us through. Yeah, yeah, and, and again, I just echo that and just seeing just through this past year, all the folks that uh, have come together uh, you know, through Stratford Strong and just around the community on the health businesses and just people in general that are at, in need. I, I know you mentioned Tammy Trojanowski and the work she's been doing. Uh, and that whole group has been fantastic uh, to help those you know, get access to food and, and shelter and other things um, throughout this past year. So I commend really your whole team and, and everyone uh, in Stratford uh, for all they've done this past year. Um, so, so now that we're looking and talking about vaccinations, right? And um, and trying to get to that herd in unity. Uh, there's been a lot of coverage right now, uh, Laura, on uh, the vaccination rate in towns in Fairfield County. Uh, and there was a headline showing Stratford, you know, slightly behind other communities in the rate of fully vaccinated individuals. So can you talk about that and what uh, the town has planned uh, to address that to increase those numbers? Surely. So through the health department and their partnerships and through um, our major hospitals in the area, we are having clinics as, as much as possible. We are doing pop-up clinics as well. We're doing a lot of publicity, door-to-door um, -door handouts for uh, certain neighborhoods that seem to not be as inclined to be vaccinated. Um, our, our largest segment of people who have not received their second dose is on the, on the property line bordering Br Bridgeport. It's a heavy, heavily populated residential area. And I think that, um, just like as much like Bridgeport, folks are, are, are a little hesitant. So we're doing continued outreach. We are now vaccinating um, 12 to 15 year olds in schools. And through um, that uh, pathway, actually we're getting to families who might be a little hesitant, but want more information. And Andrew and her teamers are offering uh, that, educa that education and access to information. Yeah, great. Yeah, you alluded to uh, the hesitancy. Uh, and ironically, yesterday, and I think we had a, quite a few folks that are on this call on the, on the call yesterday too, uh, the, the, the Stratford Chamber and the Business Council hosted a dialogue with um, uh, uh, the, the two hospitals and 
uh, Mitchell and Sheehan, who's sponsoring this particular address, uh, Attorney Phelan, just to help navigate uh, businesses and answer some questions about uh, not just the myths around the vaccine and why perhaps some folks are hesitant on taking the vaccine, but also what businesses can do from a liability perspective um, and bringing their employees back that may or may not be vaccinated. Uh, it was a great discussion. And uh, just, a, just a footnote here for those who are on the call who may not have been able to join us yesterday. Um, I do believe that video is available uh, both on our Facebook page as well as uh, our YouTube channel. Um, so if you want to go back and listen to it, I think it's very helpful, very good information, um, for, particularly for business owners looking to bring back their employees and how to navigate, you know, the, the next few weeks, um, as, you know, as things continue to open up. So I, I like to just remind uh, the folks that are on the on the uh, listening here, if you do have a question, you know, raise your hand in the Q&A, um, or if you'd like to type it in, um, I will get, get to you. Um, but I did have one more question, and I'll open it up um, to, to the participants here. Um, you, you mentioned about the budget. Uh, and there's been some discussion about funding uh, of the town library in Stratford in, in your recent proposed budget, uh, Mayor Hoydick, uh, and reductions of the requests you received from the library. Could you talk a little bit about that? Early. Um, and one more shout out to uh, Bob Mitchell and Peg Sheehan. Thank you for sp sponsoring. They're great um, attributes to our community. Uh, they both live here, love them dearly. Um, and they're very, very involved in our um, negotiations and our, our labor council. So. Thank you, uh, Dan, for reminding me about Bob and Peg. Uh, so with regard to the library, the, um, our library is, is amazing. They were able to reopen um, and provide services to the community during the pandemic. Um, and I think I have recently opened their doors and uh, we're starting to get a, a lot more people flow through the library. And so they were able also to take advantage of the PPP loans grants and which um, helped fortify them and so the reduction of $55,000 that I recommended to the council um, was something that I thought that they could weather. Great. Great. Oh and, and Dan one more thing um, I forgot to mention that the town of Stratford has always um, supported the library in its capital pro projects and I think we besides the 3.2 million dollars that we fund every year for the budget there's also capital improvements and um, we're on the third year of that project going forward. So the library means a lot to us. Excellent. Yeah, no, it's a valuable resource in town for sure, especially during this, this year. I, uh, Sherry Szymanski, who's uh, on our board at the Stratford Chamber, she uh, um, often has incredible updates, you know, throughout the past year supporting, you know, people getting them access to computers so they can register for the vaccine and things of that nature. So um, a great resource for sure. Um, okay, so I do have a question here um, from uh, Councilman uh, Chris Pia. So I'm going to ask Chris to, uh, if he can unmute his line there, and you can ask your question directly, Chris. Dan, can you hear me? We can. Dan, good thank afternoon. you. Uh, Mayor Gordick, good afternoon. Thank you for, first off, Laura, for everything for your continuous leadership. It's, um, you know, I've had the opportunity to work with you, as you, as you know, from back on the chamber board through the council. And um you are a true leader and we truly appreciate your dedication. Um, just, just a quick question, because it's come up in a little bit of discussion over the past week or so um, regarding um, the town of Stratford being uh, placed on a distressed municipality list. Can you just highlight or I guess clarify uh, what that means essentially for the town and more in particular, um, the distinction between the, the labeling of that and the day-to-day -day operations, um, just so I can understand a little bit more. Surely, thank you for that question, uh, Chris. It, we were um, surprised to be placed on the distressed municipalities list for 2020. Uh, there's a lot of different factors that go into that designation that's decided by DECD. Unemployment is one of the keys. And um, as you know, from, 19, from 2020, Stratford's unemployment has raised considerably. And um, that may be something that uh, pushed us over uh, the edge as far as the waiting um, uh, the weighting of the uh, decision to um, what what tw top 25 were on that list or not. Um, there's a, a weighting part that goes in besides unemployment, it's per capita income. It's also um, uh, the number of people that are living at poverty or below poverty. Um, it's also our debt. And as you know, Chris, being on the council that, um, 
the council in 2012 made the courageous decision to bond our pension liability, close the pension and then bond the liability to pay off that debt. And so that's that's a big nut for Stratford. It's over $300 million uh, that we are um, paying off um, as we go as we go day to day, to day year to year. And um, with the high school, Stratford High School project, that was another almost $60 million of debt that the town undertook. So all, I think all of these factors plus the unemployment put us in that category. Great, thanks for your question, Chris. Um, so we're a couple minutes before the hour. Is there any last minute questions here? Um, otherwise I have one final question for Mayor Hoydick uh, and then we'll wrap it up. Um, so Mayor Hoydick, on a lighter note, this summer, what are you most looking forward to? Uh, hopefully, as things continue to open up uh, here with the vaccine, I'm just curious what you know what you're itching to do that you may not have been able to do over the last year. So I can't wait until we have uh, fireworks for July 4th, and we're going to have blues on the beach on uh, July 24th. All so right. those are uh, two excellent. awesome things in the summer, and um, I'm not exactly sure what they're totally going to look like yet, but we are working all together to figure out how we're going to make those things happen. Excellent. Well, we'll, we'll look forward to it too. We can always uh, use some music and uh, some camaraderie together in person outside under the stars. Um, so fantastic. So thanks so much again for your time, your willingness to join us uh, this afternoon, Mayor Hoydick. I don't see any other questions. I don't see any hands raised. We're uh, just a couple minutes short of the hour. Um, just want to, uh, fi one final reminder for everyone. It is restaurant week. So please uh, frequent our uh, local restaurants. They, they uh, uh, sincerely uh, could use our support um, as always, and I know that the folks that are on this call have always been wonderful supporters of, of uh, the Stratford community. And then finally, again, just one last thanks to our sponsors, Bridgeport Fitting, Ash, Ash Creek Enterprise, Mitchell and Sheehan, Aquarium Water Company, and of course, uh, the Milford Bank, um, all of which have been wonderful supporters of our organization and, and Stratford in particularly. So with that, I, I bid you all uh, adieu for, until next time. And uh, thanks again, Mayor Hoydick, for joining us today. Uh, we appreciate all you do and your leadership in Stratford. Thank you, Dan. Have a great afternoon, everyone. Be well.